Welcome to Longevity Industries Podcast and the presentation of the Destiny of Manufacturing Podcast. Our guest today is Dave Arn. He comes to us from Penaflex, where he is the president. Dave is also the current chairman for the Precision Metal Forming Association. Precision Metal Forming Association and the Precision Metal Forming Association's Educational Foundation are both sponsors of our show, too, and we really appreciate that. Dave, welcome. Thank you. I know you've got a very busy schedule, and we do appreciate you taking time out to uh, to be here today. Uh, Dave, tell us about uh, tell us about Penaflex. Penaflex is a uh, contract stamper, principally for the heavy duty truck manufacturing market. We uh, supply deep draw stampings and and, and heavy gauge parts. Um, we have presses that run from seventy five ton up to twenty three hundred ton. Um, hydraulic, mechanical, and servo presses, and we also do welded assemblies um, <clears throat> with uh, MIG welded uh, parts and spot welded parts. So it's pretty it's pretty diverse, but it's all trended towards the, uh, the heavy truck market. We've been trying to we've been diversifying over the last couple of years to get into more of the uh, light truck applications, which are somewhat thinner gauge and uh, higher volumes, and we're having some success at that. So that that's been our bread and butter. That's that's great. I I think one of the areas that people often overlook when it comes to truck is that they believe that well there's no there there's no advantage to just trying to make improvements and that they're not really making an effort to reduce weight or use new technology and I think that's uh really misguided. Oh yeah, <clears throat> for sure. I know in the in the uh, the overall truck uh, marketing side of things, the uh, the effort to improve fuel economy they've gone from you know around six miles per gallon per truck up to uh, diesel fuel up to about eight and nine they go turning towards ten miles per gallon. They've done, they've done that by light weighting and aerodynamic improvements and engine improvements, and so it's been a it's been a really um, exciting time for the truck market. Actually, I think as I looked at the market from last year, the market was down considerably in 2016. And I think part of that was due to the fact that two or three of the uh, major truck companies had new product coming out for 2017, and there was a tendency for people to wait to get the new fuel economy numbers. And so so uh, this year has been a, a very good year, and it's trending up, and next year is going to be an even better year. Great. That's good to hear. I, I It's funny that I came apart about that information because – I was talking to uh, a manufacturer in the truck industry, and they were saying that they were moving to the um, high-strength, low-alloy materials at that time to improve fuel economy. But the other side of it is, is that I hadn't thought of is that you can haul more if you can reduce right. the weight. Yep. Yeah, the products we make, we make um, about 50% of my product is, heavy, is HSLA material goes up to 80 KSI, and uh, we've, you know, we've, we've introduced some new product in the last couple of years, which was HSLA-directed and, and um, goes exactly at that, increasing the, uh, the truck manufacturer's capacity to ha- add more, more tonnage. That, that's great, and I think it really, you know, in the long run, it benefits everybody. I think, uh, you know, if we can reduce, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, fuel econ- you know, improve our fuel economy and reduce uh, uh, how much, just the the weight of the machine, the uh, the machines that we have, you know, whether it's a truck right. or a car. Yeah. And, and then around the corner, there's all kinds of new things coming with uh, autonomous trucks and electric trucks and and uh, different power trains, and it's an uh, exciting time. Great. Um, one of the uh, the focus is on our show here is to talk about the outlook. If you can look five years down the road, what changes do you see either for your company or for the industry itself? Yeah, well, for the in- industry itself, I mean, there's definitely um, trying to make advancements with, with electric trucks as alternate power sources. And they're definitely looking at autonomous trucks and and platooning and, and uh, a lot more electronics in the cab for safety and guidance systems. And uh, there's a, you know, for the product we make, we make a lot of products that go into the foundation brake systems, which are the drum brake packages. And there's a real push towards disc brake um, packages in the, in the marketplace. And so that'll have an impact on us. Plus there's 
there's uh, threats from global supply and how we address um, supplying our product globally. So there's a lot happening. Wow, it certainly sounds like it, and we're 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 excited to see those changes coming here. If what what kind of changes do you see that your company is going to have to make in order to address some of those? Well, I think um, as I indicated, we're we're a principal um, supplier of products for the Foundation Break Group, and I think that market is going to go down. The uh, the the uh, ratio between drum breaks and 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 disc brakes is going to reverse where disc brakes are becoming more of a prevalent product. And our, some of our products don't go on disc brake packages. So we're diversifying our, our product content. We're looking a lot more at, at uh, light truck applications now, um, you know, class uh, the F-150, uh, Silverado kinds of trucks up through the, the class 5, class 6 kind of trucks. And so we're diversifying um, our products and our, and our capabilities towards those kinds of products, which means we've gone to the servo presses that allow us to run more high volume kinds of parts and thinner gauge parts and run them much faster. Can you speak a little bit about that, about that technology, um, how that's changed, uh, how you've done your processes and some of that? Well, the, the servo press technology basically uh, replaces the clutch and drum and all the, the uh, that kind of mechanical drive system from a press with a servo uh, control motor that, that drives the press. And um, in certain applications, when we have a pretty flat part, we can put the, the press into what they call pendulum motion, where the, the, uh, all the gears and everything don't go over the top. They just rotate pendulum back and forth, and that allows us to get about twice as many strokes per minute as we would with the conventional uh, mechanical press. And so that's been a real productivity um, find for us in game. And so we're using that for a lot of our, our uh, medium-sized products now. And, uh, and then on the, uh, the uh, welded assembly side of things, um, we've got servo uh, controls on our, our new weld, weld systems. And um, there's been tremendous productivity gains over the last couple of years. Wow, certainly sounds like it. That's good to hear. Uh, and I'm sure it, it helps at the end of the day to be competitive in, uh, in the marketplace because uh, for your business, there's a lot of competitors out there trying to uh, uh, find new ways to uh, be more efficient. Mm-hmm. Well, we've also had to deal with over the last couple of years now where um, our, our key customers have had major facilities down in Mexico that we have to supply to. So we have to be comp- competitive with the Mexican market. And now we've got, there's competitors from China that are trying to get into the marketplace through Mexico. So it's going to be a more complicated uh, marketing situation as well. Great. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you've had uh, from a workforce development standpoint. I know when we've had uh, PMA discussions, we've talked about all the companies that are suffering and struggling with finding people to uh, to fill the positions that that we have open, and uh, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure, I'd like to. Um, last year, for example, our our employment uh, went down about thirty percent because the market was down, marketplace is down about thirty percent for heavy truck heavy trucks. This year, starting in the spring, the marketplace has jumped back up thirty five percent, so we had to hire an additional thirty percent to our, our employee staff. And that meant we've got about 35 to 40 new employees out in the shop at any one point given time. And it's been a real challenge for us to have enough senior mentor people to uh, to show the new people what to do. And then we've had a, a very high turnover rate with the new employees, which is symptomatic of, of most 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 manufacturers. And that's unfortunate. But, I mean, we um, we have a, a really good training program, we believe, it's on a, based on a attempt to hire kind of situation where we bring people out for 90 days. At the end of the 90 days, if they've demonstrated a, a deafness for, for, make, for manufacturing and, and they have the ability to show up on time and, and, and be here, then we offer them a permanent position. But um, we've had, uh, this year, so far, I've, ha- I've hired 140 people to, to uh, maintain this additional staff of 35. So that's a huge turnover rate, which has got implications. And we do a lot of training for, for people that don't stay, and that that really you know goes right to the bottom line. 
it affects our productivity, and and that's not a particularly good thing for the company. So so um, we've done a lot to try to improve our training methods and our methodology and and how we go about things to uh, to make it more efficient for us and also to make sure the employees are properly coached when they go out on the floor and uh, and keep the place running. Fortunately, we've started to see our productivity go up the last couple of months as we've been able to retain more of the employees that, that we hired than we were, were having success with in a couple of the previous months. But it's, a, it's definitely a challenge. The unemployment rate, unemployment rate in the Springfield area is down around 5%. And so you get down to, you know, a lot of people that are left are just people that want to work temporary kind of assignments or are not interested in, 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 in long-term employment. Which, which makes it difficult. But on, a, on a technical skill trade side of things, we've had pretty good luck in finding uh, tool makers that would like to come to work at Penaflex and, and help our, our, help our um, tool making capabilities. So, so it's been kind of different that way. Most companies are having a lot of trouble finding tool makers, and we've been having pretty good, pretty good success at that. Yeah, that's one area that I hear constantly from manufacturing is tool and die that they are lacking in finding people to fill those positions that are skilled. And yeah. have you uh, talked to some of the educators in the area to address some of the needs that you have to try and uh, develop that workforce? Yeah, sure. We we have in Springfield we have what we call um, CTC, which is our Springfield um, technical technical center for high school. We also have a STEM program in our schools. And we work with them. Um, you know, we are a big proponent of Manufacturing Day. We average about 200 kids a year coming through the shop to to be acquainted, to get acquainted with manufacturing. We uh, sponsor summer intern students from the high schools. We sponsor summer interns from the, uh, from Ohio State. So uh, we're definitely trying to be involved with the, the local community colleges, uh, um, Clark State, and uh, and we're trying to, to foster uh, enthusiasm for manufacturing. That's good because this uh, broadcast will be going out on Manufacturing Day. So <laughs> it's uh, right. pretty apropos. Yep. So that uh, timing couldn't be better for this. Uh, yep. what, what advice can you offer to employers in our industry about preparing uh, to hire new workers? Uh, what processes do you have to try and uh, bring in new people? Well, we work, we work with the two recruiting agencies principally to bring people to us. And what we do then is um, when they find applicants um, that they think are going to be good fits for us, we have those people come in and we give, give them a, a, a tour and uh, walk around and have them talk to people on the shop to see what they're doing and, and you know, what they think of the, the uh, opportunities. And then uh, and, uh, <clears throat> when they come in, for the very first day, we have an orientation program for a two-hour orientation program to talk to them about safety principally and, and some of the things they'll see out of the shop when they go out for the first time. And then we have them work with a mentor um, employee for the first week or a week and a half on a, a specific assignment. And uh, so we try to you know make sure they get off to a good start. Um, we have a – at Penaflex, we have weekly all-employee meetings. So I meet with all the staff – with all three shifts – uh, either I or one of my senior managers meet with all three shifts on a weekly basis, and we talk about productivity. We talk about things that are going right, things are going wrong, what's coming up with the customer base, what's coming up with the marketplace. Um, we also have what we call our gain-sharing program, where if if our people do costs are greater than our people labor costs, then we share some of that money back with the employees. So you know, we try to get them entrenched in that philosophy and, and, and see the benefits of that, that um, opportunity. And then we have uh, pay for skills programs for, for the employees where as they progress, once they become full-time employees, they can progress through five different um, categories of, uh, of skills. And as they add more skills to their toolbox, then they uh, get, can make more money. So, you know, those are, those are the kind, kinds of things we're doing, the concepts we have to try to train people and enthuse them about working here at Teneflex. The, uh, just the planning for uh, the the career track and those kinds of things. I've seen a lot of success out of companies that take that approach. Uh, it's it seems to be that not only 
I, I know that everybody, you know, puts a knock on the millennials and uh, the future of our manufacturing, and you know, also. And for that reason, you have to understand that everybody likes to see where their path is taking them. And I think it's great that you guys are uh, kind of giving them a direction that, okay, if you do this, then you can have this. And, and right. have, have yeah. you found that better to help you for, with retention? Well, I think we're having, yeah, our retention has definitely improved over the last, I mean, 2015 was a banner year for us production wise and the truck market was booming. We had a huge turnover that year. And so we modified our training program at that point in time. And then since then, we've had better retention. But it's still, there's still a long ways to go to, to be where we want to have it because whenever we have employee turnover, that, that creates, um, you know, uh, uncertainty out in the shop and, and, uh, and hurts productivity. So we definitely want to keep, in, keep improving on our retention. Yeah, does uh, do you see uh, that changing? I know that some of the numbers that people have talked about that in ten years that the millennial uh, generation will be the largest in the workforce, um, because obviously all the baby boomers will be retiring, and uh, because of that segment uh, will consist of the majority of our workers and. Uh, they're going to be our leaders in, in one of the areas that uh, we've seen is in STEM curriculums and some of the things like Manufacturing Day. I, I, I think that there's a lot of optimism to be had there, uh, the interest in some of the new technologies that they are embracing that wasn't even around when, when I was younger, and it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that, that was even on the horizon, things like additive manufacturing and things like uh, uh, it, as part of that, you know, some of the metal 3D printing uh, aspects. Yeah, right. Well, I think our STEM schools here um, and our CTC, they have very good classes in 3D printing, and it really, you know, it, it, it excites the kids, and they work on projects that uh, get national exposure, and, uh, and it, it's a good program. And definitely uh, additive manufacturing going forward in the manufacturing industry will be a big thing. Maybe not so much in what we do because because uh, the parts are are really heavy gauge and, and big parts. But um, certainly, um, you know, I can see 3D um, additive uh, manufacturing concepts coming in to help us with our gauge and fixture design and some uh, service part tooling and uh, and some of the tooling applications. So uh, it, it's it's uh, it's going to be an exciting time. A lot of that area too. We see a lot of the uh, like the Vex Robotics competitions and First Robotics. And yep. uh, do you do you see that more of that coming in to your facility too? Yeah, we see a we see a real <laughs> need to have uh, more robotics and automation in our facility. Yes, but there's a lot of jobs out there that are really mundane where um, a robot can can do it, and the robot shows up every day, and the robot does things consistently, and those kinds of opportunities. Operations would be uh, uh, good to have robots doing some of the work for us. So, because of the, the difficulty we have in, in recruiting people, we're going to use our, our people on, on more um, on, on assignments that require a little bit higher skill level and, uh, and some creative thinking and, and, uh, and you know, preventive maintenance capabilities, things along that line. So, there's, there's a lot of change coming up. Yeah, I. I, I I think so too. I think that in the next five years we're going to see a an incredible shift in technology. And uh, somebody had mentioned about uh, sensors and processing of information. And y you know you see a lot of that in the talk about the uh, industrial Internet of Things. And uh, uh, what what is your opinion on on where some of that is going? Well, definitely, we're, we're definitely adding a lot more sensor technology to our manufacturing processes here at the Peniflex. Um, <clears throat> the sensors help us you know, avoid die crashes, which is really important. And as we speed the strokes per minute up using our servo press technology, having the right sensoring in, in place to make sure we don't have an accident or a crash is really important. And, and we have to do that, to, you know, because that affects our, greatly affects our productivity. Um, and then... With the uh, the welding concept, welding 
uh, operations we have, having uh, better controls is, is super important. And uh, we've updated our weld technology, our control technology on our welders. So there's a lot of things coming down the pipe that are going to be big advancements for us. Great. Well, I do appreciate your time today. Uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I do, I do appreciate you taking the time with us. And uh, it's, been, it's been very insightful. So I, I want to thank you very much, Dave Arndt, for, for being here today. And uh, we appreciate the audience taking the time, and we certainly appreciate our sponsors for helping us out with this, uh, the Precision Metal Forming Association and the PMA Educational Foundation. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.